Shapiro, thanks very much. So how far should banks go to prevent a foreclosure? Shouldn't borrowers also bear some responsibility for doing the right thing? So let's ask our Fox panel, including Terry Keenan from Fox News, Peter Schiff, author of Crash Proof, Fox Business contributor Charles Payne, and Gary Kalpbaum from GaryK.com, along with Joe Battapaglia of Stiefel Nicholas. Joe, when you hear that one woman that Adam just interviewed talking about how a modification in her mortgage is now helping her actually hold on to the house. Does this give you encouragement in thinking that this is the right path to follow? Well, unfortunately, we have such large volume here that if you stabilize those in their homes, they will not be contributors to the economy prospectively because it will still be a heavy burden. In addition, the marketplace will not know what the true value of homes should be, so it arguably will take longer for prices to correctly adjust. And then lastly, the banks then must take even bigger write-offs along with their investors over the next two years, which creates more uncertainty for the credit markets. Charles, Ben Bernanke was talking about equity you today the value that you have in a home. He says that we, the government, should do more to, quote, restore some equity for the homeowner. But a lot of these homeowners put no equity in it. They don't have a stake in their right. home because they didn't put any money down. So is he using the wrong word when he says restore equity because they he didn't might, have any to begin with? I think with? he might have probably should have used restore confidence or restore confidence in a system or the real estate market. Certainly restoring equity probably is the wrong word to use. But I sort of disagree a little bit with what Joe is just saying. I think the banks, you know, despite the fact who's at fault, who made a mistake, probably it's, it's part self-preservation and part that confidence thing that Bernanke alluded to. They need to work with these uh, borrowers right now to try to figure something out. Also, the banks have to know in the back of their mind that Congress is probably going to come out with some more plans and, you know, probably at the end of the day they might get bailed out, and, you know, through the taxpayer one way or another. Peter Schiff, what's the best idea here to fix this problem at the moment and, well, and how much of a responsibility do the homeowners bear? In well, this? you know, I think the borrowers are actually in the driver's seat here. I mean, look what Bernanke admitted, that the recovery rates in foreclosure are less than 50 cents on the dollar. So that's a powerful incentive because the borrower can just say, I'm out of here. Here's my keys. And when the lenders are confronted with those realities, they're going to make a deal with these borrowers uh, that maybe is better than getting 40 or 50 cents or less on the dollar. So I don't think they need any help. I think it's the lenders who need the help. Well, and Terry, mm -hmm. Bernanke is also talking about not only lowering interest, but lowering the principal on the, on the house. And, and, and the question is, won't everybody want a lowering of their principal now? Of course. And if you lower the principal on a house that's in trouble and on the verge of foreclosure, you're lowering the price of the whole neighborhood. You know, there goes the neighborhood. And it, I, I know it boggles my mind that Ben Bernanke is using the term restore equity. It is the exact flip side, 180 degrees from what Alan Greenspan told everyone to do three years ago, which was equity extraction. Extract the equity out of your house. Go shopping, you know, yeah. go help the economy. Now the government, uh, we're yeah. supposed to now restore this equity? Yeah, that's a, that's a good point. You, you, you hey, extract David, the equity you... and spend it, and then the government refills your piggy bank for you so you, can, so you can do it again. But you know what this also shows is how much home prices have to fall. If lenders can only get back 50 cents on the dollar in a foreclosure, that means down payments need to be 50 percent. Let's get Gary Kalpbaum in here and then and then, Joe, I'll let you get back into uh, Gary. When when you look at the overall idea of a solution that might involve the government and the lenders, what is it? Well, I think the solution has moved to Sweden at this point in time. <laughs> you know, I, I got to tell you, I sat there. Uh, I'm in Orlando, and I'm watching Bernanke and listen. To, I wasn't there where he was, but uh, listening to what he says. And this proposal is just, I, I cannot believe what I am listening to. You're going to ask banks to give up money? Get, banks can't afford to give up money right now. They're losing their butts, and they don't even know where their earnings are. All this is is more socialist policy to let government get in and do more. And all they've done is screw things up in the first place. I, I, Mar not, markets Bernanke, have to work this socialist. out over time. I mean, we've got to challenge that here. Bernanke but, but, is not a socialist. But, but, but let's bring in Joe Batapak here, David. Yeah, I've, although I just wanted to well, say... One, one, one thing, Joe, is that is that it's clear that what Bernanke was doing was was involving himself in public policy. Is that out of step for a Fed leader? 
He has made a dreadful error here because in the past, Alan Greenspan nuanced his comments so that there was something for Republicans and Democrats to fight over, not to assume that it's right. He has now basically taken the lid off of everything and said, raise the cap for a lending from Fannie and Freddie, raise the cap for guarantees from HFA. And he used the right words. He, in effect, is saying give equity in the homes to the homeowner, which is to say, as example, if the house was worth 100 now and the guy owes a hundred then give him twenty thousand off to eighty he now has twenty thousand in the game that is socialism as plain as i can get it because you're not only redistributing wealth you're now giving you, other Joe. people's money away and that's <laughs> well, a sad state of affairs <laughs> and he has endorsed this Look. which gives congressmen like barney frank and senators like chuck schumer a chance to run for yeah. the roses here I, you know, to I, redistribute I think, more income and my you know, main I, point I, I will say joe joe to your point you know this guy is considered either the most powerful the second most powerful man in the world he's got a so can be replaced, He's Charles, show and he some should. Leadership, though, at some point, in this sort of crisis, that's not his job, Charles. His job yeah, is price stability. His no, job sir. is price my, stability my, my, in the economy. He got the Charles. job because he was going to speak to us, and, and he screwed that up too. We don't have price stability. One at a time. All right, that's a whole different topic. We have a 15-second hard break, and you know what that means. We got to take a break. We'll be back with a lot more of our exciting discussion in a moment. It's do or die for. You've got money in a savings account, maybe a CD. I'm sure a lot of you do. Do you need to be worried about the banking system at the moment? Our Fox panel is back now to talk about it, including Nicole Ridgway from SmartMoney.com. Now, Nicole, the head of the FDIC is very careful with the words that she uses. She doesn't want to cause anybody to panic, certainly doesn't want to run in the bank. We already saw one in England. We don't want anything like that happening here. Uh, and to put it in perspective, the SNLs, we had over a thousand institutions closed down. We're nowhere near near that right now nowhere near that and there and there are certain insurances put in place that'll make sure that you know the average person saving money in their account they're not going to lose it there's insurance in place uh, Terry she just stressed the average which is great yeah. but you already saw a, a pricey fund that you need several million to be in at Citigroup where some people were getting the call saying sorry you can't take your money out for mm -hmm. six weeks then it became at least a couple of months yeah and this Citigroup situation is worrisome I mean this was the world's biggest bank it had the investors, some of the best investors in the world, Eddie Lamper, uh, Prince Awalid, investing in it. Now, the sovereign funds uh, of Abu Dhabi and Kuwait and the Prince saying they need more capital. I mean, this is a very serious situation. And I also think there's going to be massive layoffs at the, at the bank. 300,000 people work at Citigroup. So it has huge ramifications for the rest of the, of the economy as well. It yeah, does, sure. Peter. Well, first of all, the banks are in some serious trouble because, you know, they're in the business not only of lending money, but being paid back. And that's the important part of the whole deal there. You've got to get paid back. And with these recovery rates as low as they are, they won't. But the losses, as far as bank failures, what the government is doing right now to prevent the failures, and they're still going to come, is inflicting real losses on depositors right now. How? Because the dollars that they have on deposit are losing value. And it doesn't matter if the bank fails and you have fewer dollars or you keep all your dollars but it costs you twice as much to buy gasoline or to buy food because your money is losing purchasing power either way. Uh, Gary Kalpom, when people call you up and say, buddy, listen, I know you're in on this money stuff, is my investment or my cash that I have parked in a CD or a money market, is that safe? What's your response to that? I have actually had a few calls from people about money markets, and I tell them I've done my checking and don't think so. Now, look, as far as whether bank fails or not, I don't see it. You know, there's all this talk, and whenever things go south for any industry, somehow the people come out of the woodwork saying the end of the world is coming. That's usually overrated. There are definite issues out there. I think Countrywide was going to go bankrupt before Bank of America took over. I thought, I think there's going to be some casualties, but overall, I think we'll be in fine shape, and, and I won't, we won't be laughing about it ten years from now. But we'll be looking back on it, and I think everything will be a okay when all said and done. Charles, uh, the head of the FDIC, she was very uh, assertive. Right. when she was here, suggesting that they have plenty of cash to back up any kind of bank failure, at least the kinds that they were expecting. Are they underestimating the degree to which our banking system's in trouble? I don't think they are. I, I mean, really, she has been steadfast for a very long time, and despite the fact that, you know, these investment banks have lost all credibility because, in part, that I think initially they were sort of BSing the public, and then later on they couldn't figure it out themselves. So, yeah, there is a situation there, but let's not... But Terry's suggesting... Yeah, but 
city is now BSing the, the country <laughs> well, in terms of what it has but, and what it does. I don't think city is going to go under. Now, listen, doesn't mean that these guys aren't going to pay a heavy price. Now, we've already seen over 200 mortgage lenders go out of business, and that was the epicenter of this whole thing. Uh, you know, as far as these larger banks are concerned, I think we're going to be okay. Yeah. But, but again, they're going to be fractured. She, she, she should be ashamed to even show her face. I mean, where was Sheila she? Baird. Where, yes, where was <laughs> Sheila Baird when all these banks were yeah. writing these CDO squares and cubed and, you know, but square you, roots? Remember, well, even, 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 yeah. yeah. even, yeah. even, exactly. even if City, her city Group. To take away the, yeah, the even if City Group doesn't go bankrupt, shareholders in America who own the common stock are still going to be practically wiped out based on these sweetheart deals that they're cutting to, you know, like the Abu Dhabi, you know, a, a sovereign wealth fund. These guys are getting these fat coupons on their preferred shares. I tell you it what, doesn't so matter we, to them what happens bought, to the common. If people bought Citibank the same time that the Saudi prince invested in it in 1991, they would have made a fortune. Yeah, Any investor Charles, watching the show Charles, can join in. If they want to no, buy the stock, Charles, they, they the won't get the Charles, listen, the Americans are buying the common. Right now, these guys are okay. buying preferred. Let me they're bring it back, like Nicole Ridgeway. Let me yes. bring it right. back to the original subject matter, and that is, is your money that's in some of these banks safe? I want to say something nice about Sheila Bear here. She was among the first to really start to say, you guys got to watch out about these subprime loans, and there's going to be a serious problem down the road. But now that we're here, should people be moving their money out since you're there with smart money? Should people be moving their money into things like municipal bonds and things like that that are just a little bit more safe where the FDIC, you don't have to worry about whether they can cover you. Well, the problem with the municipal bonds is um, because of the ratings on the bond insurers, there is some question about whether or not they're going to actually be able to get those great rates with those AAA ratings. Um, so the muni bonds may not be the best place to go, but, um, you know, keeping it in safe investments, the money markets are not going to give the great returns, but, you know, they will be safe enough in them. Well, Gary Kay, your excellent piece questioning whether a uh, city is as cheap as, uh, as, as some people say it is right now. Do you think that folks who are invested in city are going to lose everything? Uh, no, I, but I, I think it's definitely going into the teens and maybe into single digits. That has happened before. You got to remember something. Markets trade based on earnings. There is a clear lack of earnings and a ton of losses out there, and I think there is more to come. And when you get into a bear market for a sector which we are in for financials, I got to tell you, low is never low enough, and usually they take it to as far as it can. By the way, so I think there's I, more to go. I just want to make sure I heard you right. You said single digits for cities a possibility. Sure. Look, the stock was 55. Did you ever think it was going down to 22? It's it's half the the number it was a year ago. It's true. 120 yeah. billion in market cap. It's well, lost. Just remember, you know there are no safe investments in the United States anymore. Oh come on, no. If the, Liz, the dollar is going down. There's no safety in a money market. Then if the why dollar is losing here? value, I mean, why? because I'm trying to help. You know. <laughs> And I got there it is. But I'm all, but I you know. <laughs> but I don't keep my money here. I can still live here, but keep my money out of the dollar. Okay. That way I'm not suffering like everybody else. Uh, right. I the good I Samaritan say Peter that. Schiff. <laughs> Thanks very much. Well our and because this is <laughs> That's hard to keep my straight face. Our banks to blame for Political pundits, well, what business interests stand to gain if Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama end up campaigning and making promises in states such as Pennsylvania, Mississippi, and maybe even the territory of Puerto Rico? Our Fox panel is back now to talk about it. Charles Payne, you just heard Steve talking about how they tailor their message. But as these states are waiting, and we're waiting to see what happens, yeah. what's your prediction? Well, first of all, I want to say they're not the only ones who change. In the green room, Peter told me to buy dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, he didn't. Never. <laughs> Never. Yeah, you know, right. listen. I, you know, they, I need someone to take mine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the bottom line is that they, there, there is going to be a little bit of changing from state to state. But at the end of the day, we do know that the Democrats pose a real serious threat to big business right now. Uh, and I'm really concerned with the rhetoric because it is pandering more and more to this populism. They're going after the Edwards voters. And, you know, you have to be really worried if you're on Wall Street, and I think even if you're an American worker, because there's no such thing as breaking down capitalism and not hurting it. It trickles down and it hurts everybody. I'm so glad you brought up Wall Street. We have a mm -hmm. list of people from Wall Street who are supporting both Hillary and Obama, and this includes a ton of people from Goldman Sachs. In fact, the biggest part of the people who donate from Goldman Sachs are going to Hillary Clinton, John Mack of Morgan Stanley. Buffett, of course, support, supports both Obama and mm -hmm. Hillary. If guys like that are not worried, then Terry, why should we be? Well, because 
they're going to raise taxes on the rest of us and not on the LBO funds and the big hedge exactly. funds. And uh, they're, they're going to be able to continue at this, this lower rate and, and all the rest of us are going to have to pay higher yeah. taxes. That's why, that's why we should be concerned. In addition, this talk about NAFTA is absolutely ridiculous. We would be in a contraction. The economy would be in a contraction if it weren't for exports. Exports rose 4.8% last quarter. That's the only thing that's kept our economy above water. And these two candidates are running around talking about putting in trade restrictions. Well, Gary Kalbaum, as the candidates run around saying those things, their economic advisors are apparently going behind closed doors talking to places like Canada and Mexico saying, look, don't believe it, because once they become president, they're going to play the game. They're going to be in favor of NAFTA and all of the other trade agreements. Uh, look, you're 100% right. I'm actually happy about what we're finding out about Barack Obama. Maybe he's not so anti-trade after all. And this, if you think about it, Hillary Clinton never started talking about, she didn't just started talking about NAFTA a couple of months ago as we got to this point. So I think the rhetoric is a little bit loud for their side of the party to win votes. And once they get into the presidency, they realize that everything has to start coming towards the middle or nothing will get done. Peter, let me show you who's supporting Barack Obama and then we'll get to John McCain. Oprah Winfrey, of course we know that, but Penny Pritzker of the Pritzker family, of course, of the Hyatt uh, hotel chain. Mm -hmm. These are billionaires mm -hmm. uh, who support but him. that Pritzker family is very divided, by the way. Mm -hmm. Some of them are for Republicans, yeah. some are for Democrats. Well, certainly the, the, a lot of it has to do with appearances. You know, unfortunately, the rhetoric, rhetoric of, of the Democrats or of socialism is, you know, it makes it, if you support it, it looks like you care about people. Uh, and, and when you support freedom or capitalism, you don't care about the little guys, you just care about profit. And, you know, the difference is, of course, is, you know, it, it's, it's capitalism and free markets that do more to help poor people than, than government handouts. But at least it makes you appear better connected when you support people that espouse right. these policies. Put a nice button on that. Thank you very much. We have a hard break. Did the appraisal? We thought it was. Terry, at a time like this, do you just continue the dollar cost averaging and just stay in the market and not get panicked? Well, that's what uh, people like Warren Buffett say to do. Um, you know, in a falling market, the might not be the best thing, but it, you know, if you're a long-term investor, it's it's the safe way. But I think this market though is very dangerous, I and mean, you have financial stocks falling like knives day after day after day. So you have to be cautious. On the other hand, there are some what folks out some folks out there would call screaming buys. The old adage was, if Intel goes below 20, you buy. Apparently, a lot of people did because it's trading just below 20 now. Before it was closer to 19, and a lot of people went in to buy at the last minute. Yeah, you know what? When I before I came here, I wrote my afternoon update. If we close less than 200 points down, it would be a moral victory. So right now I'm ready to break out the confetti. <laughs> but you know what? Just because financials are doing poorly doesn't mean that the companies that sell meat are doing poorly. You know what? You have to, a lot of folks have to look at this market. I always look at the market individual stocks. I'd never look at it as a broad market. When saying that, we're at a two-decade low in terms of valuation. There are values out there. And you know what? If I had a 401k and I could afford it, I would double up on the amount I put into the stock market right now. Oh, now, sure. Gary, Gary Kalpom doesn't exactly feel that way, particularly when it comes to City, where you say this thing's going down into the teens, but do you see some buys out there right now, as in stocks are on sale? Look, there are always things that can potentially buy, but I have to make a very important point here. With all these reversals we've been seeing on a daily basis, with all the rumors we're hearing, with the Fed going from five and a quarter to three percent and going lower, with all the bailouts we've been hearing about, guess what? The markets are at about closing lows for this bear cycle. So it has been very tough, and I'm just not so sure the end is near. I think there may be more pain to go. And very important, sometimes just protect capital. Don't try to do too much. There'll be better days ahead, but we ought to get past this. Well, and to quote uh, from Gary own newsletter, the economy is spinning lower and inflation is spinning higher, Peter Schiff. Of course. And you have to remember, most stocks are still expensive. And look at the trend. You know, the Nasdaq is down better than 20% in the last four months. And if you price it in gold, it's down almost 40%, twice as much. And we're not where we and, were in 1999. And, and, and yeah, so there, there's, there's yeah. no reason to try to be a hero here. Uh, the market's going lower, but more importantly, the dollar's going lower. So you, you, you really got to be defensive. If, I mean, if you tried to dollar cost average in Intel, it was at 80 in 1999. So, you know, you'd have a lot of intel, but it's only worth a quarter of what you, know, what you were paying for it on the way and down. And you didn't get much in the and way of dividends while you were waiting. Exactly. And I want to, let me, Gary, I just want to 
uh, say something about technology because we were talking about that. You got to be very careful that Intel's doing a little bit better today. The semiconductor index is already down 40% in the last six months, so maybe a lot of this has been discounted, but that doesn't mean things are going to get better and things are going to turn up. There's still some serious issues out there in technology land. Well, it's true, Gary, but again, if you talk about selling millions and millions of iPods and, and iPhones and you have Apple stock up over 2% today, I mean, there is some real there are some real products being sold out there that oh. lead to market share. Oh, absolutely. But look, Apple for me is an exception to rule. This is just an unbelievable company with amazing products. But on the whole, if you look at the charts of all the semiconductors and most stocks in technology, they do look okay. like a horror show. But Apple is different. Okay, we're less than a minute away from the closing bell. Charles, the NASDAQ composite turning positive, erasing as much as 37 points in losses. That's going to be the headline, I think, tomorrow. That will be a headline. Uh, you know, we'll share space with all the normal bad news. But listen, the fact of the matter is we're just marking Time until Friday with the employment data, oh, yeah. and this market really is poised to go in either direction, big time. But there are there's a lot of money on the sidelines that will love an excuse to come in and buy this market up. Yeah, if we see huge losses in job creation for the month of February, Katie barred the door. I think the headline today is Peter Schiff is just trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's all I've been doing. All right. Right. Thank We're going to leave you it at the that best. as they're applauding on the streets. They are applauding a negative figure, but part of the reason they're applauding is because it was so much further negative before. It was down 200 points. It came back to close down about 40 points. And gold getting hammered today. Sorry, Peter, down about $18. Can't he can't win every day, can he? But he wins a lot. So what we have here is lower crude oil, lower gold, and a lower market except for that NASDAQ and the trading day comes to a close, but the business day continues. Here's the financial news you need to know today. We're going to bring in the bulls and bears here. What role, if any, does government have in helping reduce foreclosures? Let's ask our bulls and bears panel. Gary B. Smith, Toby Smith, Pat Dorsey, and Peter Schiff has agreed to stay with us very kindly. Thanks to all of you. Toby, first to you. What did you think of what Bernanke had to say today? Well, I was sort of amazed that the you know the head of the Federal Reserve would sit in front of a television camera and say, "You better get ready for more bank failures. You better get ready for more uh, foreclosures." And frankly, the real answer on our problem is for what's known as a cram down. In other words, taking uh, equity off of the, uh, the the mortgages, reducing, uh, giving a kickback to the uh, owner of the home to take his equity lower. Otherwise, he's going to walk away. That was about the gloomiest thing I've ever heard from a Federal Reserve chairman. You know. He actually, I think, delivered probably some reality, but I don't think it was his place to get out there and be that way. He should have been saying that behind the, the camera, not in front of the camera. Yeah, I'm sure the bankers <laughs> in the audience were absolutely thrilled by that, Gary. There was a lot of squirming. <laughs> Honesty. But let's, let's, talk, let's talk a little bit about solutions. And nobody wants to have thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of foreclosures and, and banks holding property that's empty and squatters moving it. I mean, you can't even imagine how bad... The, the scenarios could be. But, but what do you think from your brainiac mind, Gary B., is really the solution that would work here? Now, you said Gary B., and then you said Brainiac Mind, so I, kinda, I got kind of lost on the, on the translation yeah, there. by that too, Liz. Well, yeah, I, I figured T Toby would chime in, Mr. Win-Win over there. But I'll tell you what, I, I'll tell you what, Liz, you know, I, I, one part that you said, you know, we can't imagine the numbers and things like that. For me, that's the crux of the problem. No one has exactly said with any kind of accuracy how much damage this is going to uh, be done on the economy. Yes, I mean, if you want to look at the individuals you know, that, that are, are going through this, we can find a lot of cases, not just in housing, but in, in health care and everyone, where an individual is personally aggrieved. Does that mean the government needs to step in? In my mind, this was always a contract between lender and lendee that good or bad has to be worked out so I can't find the case no one's made the case to me yet with hard numbers why the government should be involved in this and Pat Dorsey of all the things that the government should be involved in lowering the principle of the house I mean that that is so much further than just helping out those in foreclosure with their interest rates 
Yeah, rewriting contract terms doesn't sound like a great precedent to set for me. To me, uh, just call me crazy on that front. Um, and, and I agree with Toby that this cram down idea is what Bernanke should not have been saying. Though, you know, delivering a dose of reality to Congress and saying there are going to be more bank failures, there are going to be more foreclosures, folks, that's just how what's going to happen when people bought price houses at too high prices and when lenders made bad decisions. Mm -hmm. Because to your former guest's point, sort of, what was the cause of all this? The cause was really simple: bad underwriting. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, that's all it was, is people making loans to borrowers who couldn't repay okay, them. Okay, we and get that. And whenever that happens, We get you know, that, Peter Schiff, and I know how you feel about it, but put your brain cells to work here and tell us what a better solution, if well, it's inevitable that uh, the government get involved, what's well, the solution? Well, I mean, the only solution, if there is one, is dramatically lower home prices. I mean, the underlying problem here is that people pay too much for houses, other people borrow too much money against the inflated value of their houses. So you have all these mortgages out there, but no collateral, insufficient collateral. So real estate prices have to go down, but nobody wants to admit that. No one wants to swallow that pill because you've got millions of homeowners living in a fantasy that they've got home equity that's not really there. All right. Well, as Washington debates... All right. Well, Clinton or Obama, who is Wall Street's favorite on the Democratic side? Well, let's turn that to our Bulls and Bears panel, and we also welcome back Nicole Ridgway of SmartMoney.com. All right. Obama's side here. Who likes him? Um, I, I think there's a lot of bankers that like them, but more money is definitely going towards Hillary uh, as far as Wall Street's concerned. Peter, uh, Obama's people did the best they could to try to encourage uh, investors and even foreigners that, in fact, his rhetoric on the campaign trail is very different from his what will be a pro-business stance if he becomes president. Yeah, I don't, I don't is Wall Street buying? I don't, I don't think there's that much difference between the two of them, but I do know that Hillary has a history of supporting the carried interest, and there's a lot of interest Explain in preserving that, that. Well, you know, some of the real big guys in the hedge fund industry and private equity, you know, they earn their income uh, through a carried interest in their partnerships, which gives them capital gains treatment on what would normally be ordinary income if in other words else earned it. Yeah, they pay 15 percent and no, as opposed and no, to and no FICA, which is which is huge. And I know that uh, Hillary has supported that. I don't really know where Barack stands on it. He's probably not in favor of it. So. Tony yeah. Smith, uh, all the a lot, a lot of the guys over at Goldman Sachs seem to uh, be pouring money into Hillary's campaign and not Obama's. Why do you think that is? Well, I, you know, to Peter's point, the carried interest is a big deal to very specific parts of Wall Street. But, you know, frankly, what they're trying to do is get as much money in her pocket as possible so that if in, if she became president or Obama became president, they've got a calling card. Remember, you know, I've been in Washington, I think, about 15 years now. The one thing I know is you got to follow the money trail. He who gave the most money to the winning candidate gains access. Uh, and access is going to be key if there's a new regime. That's why they give them the money. They're not giving them the money, you know, to, to look good or to follow their philosophical uh, desires. Trust me, it's all well, about access. And, and Gary B., isn't that the point that they're, everybody is hedging their bets right now? They're, they're giving money to Republicans, to Hillary, to Obama. You can't really find who, who Wall Street is in favor of, right? Yeah, exactly. It's the old, uh, you know, keep your friends close, your enemies closer. In this case, boy, I don't, uh, you know, you, you say uh, who does Wall Street want? It's a kind of a toss-up between Lenin and Stalin and then these two. <laughs> I'll tell you what, you know, Barack Obama, he is absolutely no friend of business. I mean, I, I have not seen a, a big government, federal government, forget it, he doesn't even like state local governments. He likes a federal government for just about everything. And, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, you know, the living wage, whether it's a mandatory... Uh, 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 health care, no matter the size of the business. Boy, he'd really put a crimp in things. I think uh, the advantage Hillary has is she's probably been around just a little bit longer as a probably a little bit more savvy politician. And after all that has realized, uh, you know, you got to really kind of walk the line on some of these issues. Uh, Pat Dorsey, you know, it's a funny line what, what Gary B. Smith says. Uh, you know, I don't know the difference between these two, a communist, socialist. But uh, John Mack of Morgan Stanley doesn't seem to, to feel that way about uh, Hillary Clinton, nor does Chaim Saban, the CEO of Saban Capital Group. I mean, there's some big money names like Stephen Ratner supporting her. On the yeah. Obama side, fewer, though. And, uh, okay, some big Hollywood people like David Geffen, Jeffrey Katzenberg, but a couple CEOs in there, too, supporting these people. Yeah, I, mean, I think the single biggest difference between the two is simply track record. Mm. She has one, he doesn't. So with her, 
you know, you can go to that track record and say, you know, it really hasn't been radically anti-business. And you can say, okay, I can have some confidence that would carry through the presidency. With him, it's much more of an unknown. And I think that's probably why you're seeing a bit less Wall Street interest coming in there, because he's more of a wild card. Maybe that rhetoric gets translated into policy. Maybe he moderates. You don't know. Whereas her, you have a voting track record you can look at. Well, Peter, you know, Peter, if things are going to get as bad as you say they are, and you say we're only in the first <laughs> inning of a long nine-inning game in terms of things going south, the next president is going to have to do or is going to feel compelled to do quite a bit. So we really should focus on these promises made on the campaign trail because things might get bad enough so that radical yeah. changes well, are put into play. I mean, w one of the best things about politicians is they rarely keep their promises and the promises <laughs> normally do more harm than good. But, you know, Hillary is still a New York senator. And even if she loses, uh, you know, the people in New York still deal with her. And I think that's another reason why she's popular on, on Wall Street is because she's already here. And she's already in New York, and people need that access, even if she's not in the White House. Uh, Tobin, last word here. Well, if things get as bad as what Peter says, the president's job is going to just be turning out the last light. So I'm not, you know, uh, I'm not quite that worried about it. Peter is. What I am worried about is Obama leading uh, a candidate. You know, like remember John Kerry? Oh, I have a plan, and his plan is basically attacks the hell out of people, and that scares me. All right, last word for Mr. Toby Smith, but he'll get the first word probably next. Coming up, President Bush wants.